Okay. We got, right. we got, okay. We got somebody in the uh, waiting room. We got Rocky wanting to join the chat. Oh, cool. Um, Rocky on. Let me put it in. Here go. Rocky, you're <clears throat> on live. Oh, what's going on, Rocky? Rocky what's awesome. up, brother? The, the, just so you know, Louis, me and Rocky have been talking about threatening each other to meet with each other, and this is actually how we actually meet on the internet. <laughs> I don't What's know going on? Know. What's going on? Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, we yeah, can yeah, hear you. Yeah. All right, cool. I, sorry, I had a, I had like, I was hearing twice here because it ended up opening up in a new tab. What um, now, you um, are you hearing twice? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was on Facebook. Uh, but no, thanks, thanks for letting me on, man. I uh, just wanted to say I'm a, I'm a big fan of you both. Uh, Louis, you've been enjoying your work since, goodness, uh, Miami Vice, just put it that way. I remember going back years ago and revisiting Miami Vice on Hulu, and then I was like, oh, my God, look, it's Louis Guzman. I never knew, noticed him back when I was a kid. But that was you know, our first him. job, Papa. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Love Listen, uh, kind of keeping with, uh, keeping with the – the dialogue that's going on here, uh, specifically like with the Young Lords Party. Um, Casper, you know, I've been reaching out to you a couple of times. Mm -hmm. I'm working on a documentary that's exploring uh, the Boricua experience, right? Uh, you know, our resilience throughout the years, just ups and downs throughout history, not only on the island, but also here on the mainland. And I have a question for both of you, and you know, one of you can answer it, or if you both want to answer, what does it mean to you? Or what does it mean to be Boricua to you? Like, what is the, um, I guess, like the main, uh, the main thing about being Boricua, the most important thing about being a Boricua, uh, like the definition of it for you in your eyes? I'm going to let Casper answer that first because uh, <laughs> you're waking up already and Casper takes a while. Oh, no, no, no. I, I, go ahead, I, Casper. Go, I'm, go. I'm going to go ahead and answer. I, unfortunately, you might not really like my answer, but it, it is my answer. You know, um, I am New Yorkan. I was born and raised in New York. You know, a lot of the island uh, Boricuas don't see us as Boricuas, but it's funny because we grew up with, with the same nuances, with the same food, with the same culture. You know Yo me crié con Sonora Ponceña, comiendo arroz con habichuela, pernil, pasteles para navidades, you know, the, the, uh, all, all the typical Puerto Rican stuff, but in New York. And yet, I, I do know that I am not from the island, but that island is, is my history. It's my parents' history. Both of my parents were born in, in Puerto Rico, papi en Mayagüe en Dulce Labio, mami en Río Piedra. You know, que yo me, que, na, que nací y me crié en, en, en el sur del Bronx. It just means that I was born and raised in the biggest town of Puerto Rico, the South Bronx. <laughs> okay, thank you, Casper. All I right, think, now you go. Yeah, I'm good. To me, what it means for me to be Boricua, well, I, I was born in Puerto Rico. And I came here as an infant, you know, in, in the mid 50s. Because, you know, that's when they had Operation Bootstrap and all that stuff. And um, and uh, what it means to me is that I, my mom used to send me to Puerto Rico every summer when I was a kid. And the kids there used to call me New York and I used to take offense to that. Because I used to say, no, you're not see aquí. And I had to fight to prove my pride, you know, and I and I fought, you know, for my pride. And um, after a couple of years, everybody just got tired of fighting me, you know, and it's okay, you know, because like I said, my pride won out, you know. Um, you know, listen, man, I, 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 I love our history. Our history has been a very painful history, you know, um, with like what, what the uh, conquistadors did and all the disease that they brought to the Tainos, you know? Um, but listen, man, what, to me, what it means to be Boricua, it means, it means Babi Caco, it means the Gran Combo, it means Cortijo, it means Lucecita, it means Residente, Cuabate, Pasteles, Danny Rivera, Mark Anthony, you know, Raul Julia, you know? It means how our people come out, like a million strong to protest against the governor, you know, like, like you know, look at we're really real people in Puerto Rico, you know, because we do come together. What kills me 
you know, because I got I got to bring these things up, right? What kills me is like, you know, we're, we're like in a limbo. You know, we sit in a limbo. It's like, you know, statehood, uh, statehood, commonwealth, or independence. You know, and it's like, I can't, I can't believe that. I can't believe any of that. You know, that, that we're like, all these things are floating around. And it's like, Konyo, but what are we, you know? And, and um, we provided a lot to this country, to the United States. We have provided many things. We have provided, you know, people that have gone to battle, to wars and stuff like that. Or ever since uh, World War One. Yeah. Yeah. We um, you know, but we also have been guinea pigs to this country. And, and that's know? and that's one of the things that I'm trying to explore with my my project is um, you know, a lot of the experiments that they were doing on the island early on, like in the thirties. Um, Casper knows about this. I had mentioned it to him. The the sterilization projects that they were running. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. Exactly. And you know, and that's what I'm trying to capture is like throughout all that history. Like, there's a lot of sad history, um, but there's a lot of good history too. Like when you think about how resilient our people have been. Yeah. Like you know, we've had a lot of shitty shit happen to us, but at the same time, you know, we've we've had world champions. You know, we, we've had people that have, like, made a name for themselves. You yeah. Know? So, I mean, and, and that's what I'm trying to capture. And I'm still in the early planning stages of it. But I'm just trying to get into the minds of, you know, of people to see, well, what does what does being Boricua mean to you? And, right. you know, especially when you look at, especially when you look at, like, Puerto Ricans, I'm glad you mentioned this, Puerto Ricans on the island versus New York Ricans or Puerto Ricans here on the mainland and how they view us and how there's that split in that identity. Which I think is really important and something that, that people need to like acknowledge. Let me let me ask you this, brother. Uh, um, um, my stalker just asked a question, and the, the question is, what do you think about what's the space Plastico Forty Cinco wanting right. to sell Puerto Rico? I mean, can can he even do that? <laughs> well, I don't. I don't what? think he. I don't think he's got the power to do that. No, um, not absolutely. But I mean, who the hell he's gonna sell us to? It, it was a conversation he had, and, and of course they, they threw it out there. But that's how stupid he is, you know. <laughs> hey, if he wants to sell it to Puerto Ricans, I mean, I, I'll take money out of my pocket. I'm sure we can raise money and, and buy the island back, yeah, right? Man. <laughs> Easy. Easy, but no, I mean, bro. You know, like, 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 you know. Look, I love our people. I love our island. I just hate the politics that go down there. And and the overwhelming corruption, you know, that is in Puerto Rico, you know, and like I've said it, I've said it for many years. I believe in Puerto Rico, we need fresh faces, we need young faces that are committed, that are committed to the progress of our people, of our culture. You know, um, there was a secretary of education there, this woman there a couple of years ago, and. She said, oh, we're no longer going to talk about the Tainos and about the history of Puerto Rico in Puerto Rican schools. <laughs> that's like, that's like, that's like to me part of the gentrification mentality. We, we need, you know, we need, whole, we need Puerto Rico to get gentrified by Puerto Ricans. Is what yeah. we, you know what I mean? Like, I, it, I feel you on that concept. Yeah. It, it's, it's sad, man, because like, um, I went down a couple of years ago to volunteer. Um, I was on in Jabucoa. I was volunteering, um, you know, after Hurricane Maria. Um, I spent a week on a roof, and it, it was sad because there were out of a group of like sixty of us that were volunteering. There were probably like three or four people that were actually Puerto Rican or had Puerto Rican roots. Everyone else was like from Europe. You know, you had people from Spain. You had people from freaking you know Eastern Europe. People from other parts of South America, yeah, they spoke Spanish, but there were only a handful of us, like three or four of us, that were actually Puerto Rican or had roots from PR. And it's like, damn, you know, like our people, we got to go down there and help our own. You know, we we need to like invest in our own instead of just letting other people, you know, do that instead. Thank you, that, and thank you for saying that because it's true, bro. It's true. You know, we I and and people might hate me for saying this, but we gotta. We got to change that welfare mentality. You know, we got to take, 
We got to take the power back into our hands. We got to do for ourselves. We're capable. We're capable. You know, let me Absolutely. tell you right now, Boricuas rule the music industry right now, worldwide. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. L look at the top, the top streams on YouTube. You know, <laughs> we, we have, we have Residente who gets no airplay but has won more Grammys than anybody in the history of the Grammys. You know, we have talent. That's what I'm trying to say. No, we do. We have great baseball players, our politicians, they suck. Look, look, at, look at sports, right? And Casper, I know you're not a sports fan, but look mm -hmm. at boxing. Look at boxing, for instance. Look how small Puerto Rico is, right? And Puerto Rico, Puerto Rican fighters, we have this rivalry with like Mexican fighters. And look yeah. how big Mexico is compared to little ass Puerto Rico. But we, you know, but we have that rivalry there. Like the, the crazy champions that have come up out of PR and, and have represented, it's it's amazing to me. So it's like we have so much to offer the world. I just wish that that we had a chance to kind of, you know, create our own destiny and not have to rely on outside forces. So did you see that kid that fought last night, by the way? On ESP now, my brother he sent me a text message to turn it on, and I forget what I was doing last night. I think I fell asleep yeah, on the man. couch. But we got kid. I think he's fourteen and zero now. Really, and 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 all, all by knockouts in the first round. Wow. His name is uh, Edgar. Um, I forget his last name, but um, he's phenomenal. He's. I, I'll tell you what his last name is right now. Because I have access to this, unlike Cap. So, <laughs> this his guy name is, is oh um Edgar Belanga, super middleweight Edgar Belanga, and he fought last night, and the kid could with either hand, you know, and you know what? He's like an old school fighter. He goes, he, he gets some really good body shots, you know. Yeah. That's what's so, up, man. That's awesome. You know, have like to check said, him out. We, we have so much talent. How far into your project are you? I'm right now. I'm in the planning stages. You know, with COVID and everything happening, it's like going slow. Uh, but I mean, it's it'll be my second full length documentary. Um, but I'm just planning it out right now. I already put together the the full like treatment of all the different topics that I want to cover. Um, probably not going to be able to cover them all, but I want to make sure that I, I hit like different pinpoints in, in our history. I don't want to just focus on the the sad pieces of our history. Like, you know, if, you know, if I wanted to do a documentary similar to the war against all Puerto Ricans, you know, you can do that only, you know, you do a documentary on just that alone. But I want to focus on a lot of like, you know, some of the, the bad things that have happened, but I also want to pay attention and, and focus on like the beautiful things that we've given the world, you know, Bomba Plena okay. music, you know what I mean? Like our food, our culture, all of that. You know, so it's like I don't want it to make it like a woe is me type of documentary film. There's enough sadness going on out there. I want to show some of the sadness, but I also want to show like the positive stuff that has come out of our people. Hey, brother, let me ask you something. How, well, how do you how have you been dealing with the whole COVID thing? You know, it's actually you know, my kids are walking around in the background. It's actually <laughs> it's it's been fine for us, man. I've been I live in the same town as. Is Casper. Um, I've just been home since February, and um, you know, luckily I, it wasn't really affecting me um, until actually last week. Um, I finally I had a good run, but uh, due to uh, reorganizations at my job, they uh, they ended up. Uh, I got caught in a rift and a reducing force, so they ended up my uh, my position at my job ended up getting cut. So that kind of oh, sucks. Wow. Yeah, that sucks. But it's you know, I still I do film. That's all, like, that's what I do on the side. That's what I went to school for. The work that I was doing, I was a uh, software consultant. Uh, okay. I did that for, like, the last 10 years. But, I mean, um, production is, like, that's my first love. So, I mean, I'm not going to let this little thump in the road stop me from continuing on. But outside of that, you know, we've been healthy. No one's no one around us has caught it. We've been wearing masks and keeping our distance. And that's really the best thing you can do. Right. Are you thinking about sending your kids back to school? Probably not till not till January. Probably not till January, because um, it almost it comes off like the they don't know what they want to do down here. 
And it's like every other day there's a new plan. Like today we yeah. found out today we found out that um they they pushed the date back until August 31st. And I mean I told my wife, I'm like, I, I don't trust them. I don't trust them, you know, like I just don't. And you know, if they don't if they don't tell parents that a kid has piojos in school, what you know, what makes you think that they're gonna tell you that a kid has COVID in the classroom? You know what I mean? And I don't know. If they can't, if, if they can't control lice in school, what makes you think they're going to be able to do that with COVID? So, I'm giving it to like maybe January. We're probably going to do a, a Volusia or Florida online, um, and just do that because I don't, know, I just don't trust it. Yeah, no, I don't blame you, brother. I don't blame you. I don't, I don't, mm -hmm. you know, because they're not medical experts and stuff like that, and you know, they, you can't politicize something like this because it's not. <laughs> you know, there are so many teachers that, that you know, are risking their lives too. Th th think about this too. Not only teachers, but like like school administration. Mm -hmm. Every, I mean, I'm 42, and every lunch lady that I've ever had in my life when I was a kid in school was a viejita. See, <laughs> so, see. you know what I mean? The, those, yeah. you know, and those are the ones that are at highest risk, right? So you're telling me that you know you got all these kids that, that might be asymptomatic getting in close contact with older people like staff administrators or like custodians i mean you know not to mention teachers too but i don't know it's it, they're they're not it's all political and it's and that's what's really just kind of causing me to not trust the government on you know on the whole the situation whole, the whole distance learning thing too i think is setting us up for the future because i mean everything is like what we're doing right here everything now i think i don't think we come back from this i think from now on it's all technology and uh zoom meetings and conferencing and like you know that's my two cents i'm going back to my box thanks i i think no i agree i, I think so as well um and you know what why not you know like if you could if you can do a job from from home if all you need is internet a camera a phone why can't you do that with with school with learning you know? yeah i mean listen i i think because of this whole situation everything now takes on a whole different perspective and and and, and, and you know i used to think you know when you used to see um this is the new normal that's right mm -hmm. but you know when you see uh online courses that they started a couple of years ago, that was like, oh, that's that's freaky, you know. But now it's normal. It's nothing. It's online courses yeah. is now more normal than ever, and it's going to continue to be more yeah. normal. Than ever. And and one thing, like you know, as as a parent of, of young children, I have three, you know, ten, nine, and and my youngest is going to be seven in December. You know, I always hear people talk about how oh, they need. My kid has to be social. They have to be in a classroom. It's, it's all that bendejase, you know? It's like, Listen, come that, on, man. That's just like BS. We're, we're having a, a conversation about that. That's a lot of people's excuse to say, the teacher's my babysitter. Exactly. I need to take care of my kid. That's exactly. not true, Exactly. that's not what teachers are for. Exactly. Let, so. me ask you, let me ask you this. What do you think about the whole stuff with vaccinations? I'm not anti-vaccine. Vaccine? But I'm not going to be the first one in line for the first COVID vaccine. I'll just say it like that. Because, <laughs> you know, all my kids got their vaccines when they were young, mm -hmm. you know, coming up. Um, but something like this, like, I've never had the flu vaccine, but that's just because I've never needed, I've never really felt like I needed to get it. My wife did. But, like, the COVID vaccine, I mean, I'll, I'll probably wait, you know, if you like Star Trek, I'll wait for the red shirts to go in first. Yeah, you know? seriously. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna send Casper on our behalf. Good looking out, bro. Good looking out. That's why I love you, bro. Yeah, man. I love you, bro. That's real. That's real, <laughs> my criao. <laughs> well, let them, your let those, first. Yeah, there you go. Hey, 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 but um, no, hey, you know, let us let let us know if. You need any help with your project and stuff like that? You know, more more than help. I'm more than happy to help I and support. It. I you know, um, and uh, thank you for coming on and spending some time with us. And you know, Papa. No, thank, thank you for having me, man. Thank you for having me and let me BS here. You know, let me okay. let me let you guys go so someone else can jump in. We'll, we'll meet. We'll meet soon, brother. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, man. No doubt.
Sí, gracias, Robert. Yeah, thank you. Wow, that was that was really that was that was great, you know. That was great. Yeah, Casper, right. talk to me. No, no, I'm I'm actually putting up here because I, I have a I want to see if we could get a couple of people other people on with us. You know, before the show is over, but yeah, Rocky's a good guy, man. I I, I got to meet Rocky here on Facebook, and then uh, he sent me uh, kind of the breakdown for that documentary that he's working on. So I put him together with Victor Cruz, who did uh, that that short film La Operacion. Even though there was a, an original movie called La Operacion uh, by uh, um, what was her name? It's a female d director. She she put it together back years ago. Um, based on what was going on in Puerto Rico and the sterilization. So, you know, getting him, I'm helping him out with some some of our friends uh, that can be resources and, and helpful to him. You know, he's also talking to Edgar Miranda Rodriguez, you know. Um, so I've been linking him up with a couple of our friends, you know, to see if they can help him out with that documentary. <laughs> 